Hello guys, today we're going to talk about something very special in Angular. Uh, it is called Interceptor and I'm sure you're going to be fascinated from it because this is a simple way how to append headers or basically um, intercept from some errors or basically doing like uh, spinner loaders or notifications or something like that in a very simple way which is decoupled from others, uh, modules and components and so on. So, I'm going to show you something very interesting. So here I'm going to say something like Angular Interceptor. And I'm going to show you a basic way how you can achieve that. Most of the tutorials are very good and very well explained. So I'm going to show you something like this, let's say. Is this a simple example? Yeah, it is. So as you can see here, this guy says that we need to do a service because of this decorator. I know this is a service. And here I have uh, this HTTP interceptor. Uh, this HTTP interceptor class tells me that I have to um, rewrite the intercept method. And it is mandatory to uh, get this request parameter, which is of type HTTP request. And after that, it's mandatory to get this next HTTP handler. Uh, as you can see here, we have something very special. We have request, which is equal to request.clone. And after that, we are setting headers with authorization and we are using some kind of auto authentication service to get our token. So, so far, so good. If I take this, I'm going to show you very easy how we can implement that. Be patient because we are going to do this just once in an application. We're going to do this just once for, let's say, token service. We're going to do just once for error service and so on. So I'm going to create, um, let's say, ng generate service, which will be token interceptor. And here I'm going to see in my application that I have this token interceptor service. As we understand, we have to implement this. Let me just uh, see one more time. We have to implement this um, HTTP interceptor class. Okay, so we go and say HTTP interceptor. After that, we have to implement the logic. The logic is three rows, so here I can place the logic and of course I can um, replace all the things that I need here. So first thing first I have to import this. That's okay. I have to import this too. And as you can see the observable and HTTP event also. That's cool but what about this out service? So here I have authentication service by the way and because we have a convention in our application to say uh, that this is a service, so I'm going to rename the variable to out, out service, and I'm going to try to import this, which will be from my from our um, out service class. But here's the interesting part: uh, if you have another name of this authentication service, it's not going to be very cool if you just copy paste this code because this code is not going to work. You have to specify your own type of service that you want to use for getting the token. Okay, so basically it looks like we have this function to get token, so it's very, very easy to us. Why these three rows are so powerful? Let me just show you one more time. We just implement this interface and after that we are rewriting this, um, we're cleaning this intercept method to our code. And of course, what we do? We should clone the request because this is immutable. And here we have set headers, authorization, bearer, and again the token. Basically the very same thing that we have done um, in the cat service. Here I have to remove this. And if I remove this, I'm going to test in a minute if my um, interceptor service is going to work. So what is the main thing here? As you can see, we have the front end part here. And here we have the back end part. The back end part forgets about us. Uh, it doesn't know who we are and what are we doing. And basically, in order to help the backend to understand us better, we send him token. Because when we logged in, he said, oh, okay, I know this user. And he sends a token to us. 
and we store this token basically this token you can say that this is um, it's something like id when i have this id i know when i get back to the backend uh, it's not going to remember me so i have to show him my id right when i show my token my id is going to say oh okay this user has permission to do this uh, i'm going to return you a re um, some request with some information some response with some information so here is the tricky part because the front end application nowadays most of the front up uh, front applications are with a huge private part let's say private part uh, what means this application to have a private part that means you have to be logged in in order to get certain resources or post or uh, create or something like that just to go to this resource and do something with it and here because of this we have to um we have to do the logic behind this implementation of setting every time the authorization token and because this is not cool just every time in every single function to go and define headers and append headers to the function and so on here we have from angular very cool thing which is called interceptor this interceptor when we try to make a request intercepts our request here and appends the token to our request and after that with this row return next dot handle request it sends it sends the cloned request with added headers to the backend which is very cool because just in one place we have all the logic for um, appending these authorization headers okay so the last part here for this interceptor is to make it work how we're going to do that basically this service it's it's not registered in app module but here i'm not going to register just like this i'm going to register in a very special way so i'm going to say here that i want to have provider provide which will be http interceptors okay the second thing here will be the class i want to use for this HTTP intercept stuff. So I'm going to say use class, and this class is going to be the token interceptor service. I'm going to import that. And the last part is going to be multi true. I'm going to allow this to be uh, multiple interceptors with uh, similar resources and so on. I'm going to explain that when we, um, when we're going to do, let's say, errors interceptor and alerts interceptor and so on. And here I'm going to save all of this. After that, I'm going to my application and I'm going to log in and I'm going to say test and the very secure pass. Okay, and now once I have been logged in, I'm going to say create. And here I'm going to try again uh, with uh, this cat, let's say, to create another class, copy image address. Uh, to create another post which will be test2 and here I'm going to say create as you can see the request is pending but we have again the status 201 if I go here you can see that again I have this authorization header appended and if I go back to my cat service you can see here that I have removed this right so our interceptor service is working Basically, two things to remember when you're implementing interceptor service. It's not just the code because everywhere you can find the code and just copy paste it. But you have to be aware of that when you register this app module, you have to go and define uh, the use class for this provide for HTTP interceptors. And here you have to specify multi true because I know that at some point of your application, you're going to need another interceptor and you um, haven't specified this, let's say, and you're going to have a lot of problems and a lot of researching and debugging to see what exactly is happening. Just put that here and remember that is going to be very important for your application in the future. Okay, so that is what we're having right now. And that was uh, the interceptor service concept. I'm very glad you have watched this video and please like, comment and subscribe if you know that video was the useful video that you have watched for Angular. And please, if you're Bulgar if you understand Bulgarian language, go down below, see the link to my channel, 
and subscribe to my channel also. Thanks. Bye.